Hello, we are going to get started in four minutes. There are also data set used today that you can download. The link is provided in the page. Also, DSS Studio is updated specifically for today's course. Um, so the interface will be a little bit different. So make sure you download it, the updated version. We are going to get started. Um, today is the last week of our workshop about correlational chartography. Before we begin today's course, make sure that you download most updated DSS Studio because there's a recent update to make sure that the interface will be uh, much better. And there, there are also some bug fix. So to make sure that the correlational chartography will run okay in today's um, tutorial. Also, there are data to be downloaded, link provided in the page. So make sure that you download it um, so that you can have a hands-on session. Okay, let's get started. So let, let's first talk about last week's differential chartography as a review. So differential chartography is essentially uh, built on top of conventional chartography. The only difference is that the there is like an additional threshold to detect the decrease of an anisotropy. So the anisotropy here could be replaced by any index. It could be um, any metrics from other modeling, um, could be anything. So we have demonstrated that next week. You can insert any nifty file and a nifty file could, could come from different methods. And there are uh, four types of uh, processing based on whether it being longitudinal comparison or or whether it is cross-sectional. And the comparison could be done in a native space or template space. Um, it depends on your application. So there are variants and, and also different application. In the documentation, 
page of the DSS Studio, there are also uh, some discussion about differential stratigraphy and whether uh, there are examples to be used for each of the type. So in practice, when you have questions, you can also go to DSS Studio's documentation page. Uh, there are also command line attached with each of the steps to make sure that things work out for you. So let's quickly go through uh, the, the part of the assignment next week about differential tractography. The question is like, um, how to validate or statistically test the results that from differential tractography. Because, because as we know, there will be always a difference if you compare any two scans and how, uh, um, how do we uh, estimate the reliability of the finding? Um, depends on how the experiment design. So the here I just have showing the diagram of the idea of testing the results. On the top is like we have the baseline scan or follow-up scan, or either it's just a control or patient, a typical comparison that we generate a lot of tracks. And we will wonder, okay, is the result reliable? Then we would repeat the same. Maybe here we will call it a shame comparison or a controlled comparison. For example, on the top we could compare control with a patient, and then on in the, at the bottom we could compare two controls, and then we and their result will be sufficiently different. For example, if we compare patient and the control, there will be a lot of finding, but when we compare all between the control, then the finding drop substantially. And then the ratio will representing uh, the, the reliability, reliability of the results, which, which we quantified as false discovery rate. So the work, since it work is that we would regard it as a top, the total finding of tracks here is the track volume. And this includes true positive finding and false positive finding. And in the bottom, because I, here is a shame comparison between control, then all the finding will be just false positive. So the ratio will be false positive over true positive plus false positive. And by definition, this is the false discovery rate. So for example, if this ratio is like 0 0.1, then we will say, well, roughly there's a 10% chance there will be a false finding. Um, and we could apply this comparison to all group of subjects to get a rough idea of how reliable the result is. So to, to have a hands-on demonstration how, uh, of how this works, um, you can download the data provided last week. And here, just for comparison, longitudinal data set. First of all, you need to get the fifth file. So here, I just listed the fifth file here, including the control. The fifth file was created by reconstructing the DWI data, which we covered in the week four. And here's the patient's data or the fifth file. So each of the fifth file, the first step is that we need to um, generate their DTIFA map. And there is a command line for generating. So essentially here, we're just repeating the type one longitudinal comparison in the native space. The first step would be reconstruction. This command generate the fifth file. And then the second command is export the DTIFA. So just for a quick demonstration of, of how this works, in DSS Studio, you can you can initiate command line in the console mode. So here, just click on the console button and make sure that you set up the right directory. So for example, we go to the longitudinal comparison where our fit files are located. And then you can just copy this command and then paste it here and run it. And this would generate fit file for each of the, uh, generate the DTI FM, uh, FM map for each of the fit files. So as you can see here, let's pull up the data. The step here, we just quickly generate all the DTI FA map shown here. And with all this data available, you could just run the last one. So the last command here is loading the first scan. So session number one is the baseline scan. And then the wildcard character here, we include 
both the control and the patient. And then the loading the other slides will be this command. So this is loading the second scan, especially the DTI FA map we generated previously. And then the comparison is done by specifying what would be the number, first metrics and second metrics. So you will compute the first metrics minus by the second metrics. So the first metric, we just specify DTI FA because this would be the metrics from the fifth file. And the second metrics will be coming from the other slides. So we only need to specify the base name before the dot. So that's how things works here. And also with file card, so you would apply to each of the subjects. And the rest will be the settings, the 20% difference threshold, a total of millions of seedings and minimum number of tracks and output the, the tractography file. And I have generated the results here. So the running this comment will get you tracks comparing the longitudinal scan. And to quickly check all the results, one trick here is you could just open any of one any subjects fifth file in step T3 fiber tracking. So you go to fiber tracking and then just open any subject. And here, instead of loading these subjects tracks, I could just load all of them, even though the space doesn't match, but we could still visualize them, visualizing them all together. So just check all of them. Just a reminder here is a native space and the fifth file is just for one subject. So here we, the subjects, um, the tractography results here is just showing the rough alignment of all the subjects for quick inspection. And then here you can see number of tracks. But the trick here is that by loading all of them, if we go to statistics, this statistic will still report the bottom. And the reporting the bottom does, here doesn't matter whether you loaded one subject or another. So this will give you a quick way of is porting the track volume for all, all the uh, results for each of the subjects. And this step will take a while, but just a reminder, this fit file is just for one subject. So from this statistics, if anything is from the anisotrophy is still from this subject, so it may not be used. The only thing we we'll use here is the track volume. So once you finish, we could just copy to clipboard and then paste it to the cell. So here's just an example of longitudinal results. And if I press it, then you will see here this subject control one, control two, and this volume doesn't matter which fifth file you loaded in, the special information will be the same. Whereas all the anisotropy things shouldn't be used here. So, because I, this will be just simple from first subject. And then by quickly comparing, com trolls and patient, then the ratio be between them will be the FDR. So what I did is I just copy this line, the control here to here, and then I calculate the average volume reported. Doing the same for the patient and the average volume you will see here is like 46,000 compared to 16,000. So obviously we get more results in patients than control. And the ratio between these two is 0.3. That means that, well, we roughly have a false discovery rate, which is 30%. So that means it, even if we find a finding in the patient's group, there would, would be roughly 30% of the finding being false. And usually for very reliable result, we have like point, the ratio will be like 0.05, but that doesn't mean that the 0.3 or 0.2 or 0.1 is just not meaningful. It's just a like give you an idea of the reliability of the results. Also, we could do the same for the cross-sectional study. For cross-sectional study, just follow the same. So the cross-sectional study, the comment is also attached here. And the difference here, instead of comparing with the subject's follow-up scan, 
here is comparing with a, con a group of control and then regress based on in the, each individual's age and sex. So this will co we cover leg three. And the trick here is that you can use comment line to quickly doing it. And then there is a one additional comment to supply the subject's demographic. So it's just for example showing here, let's turn to the cross-sectional data. And here we only use the baseline scan. So you can see here the section is just number one. We have the patients and the control. And the things we are, want to have a cross-sectional comparison is through a connectometry database. So this database including the, all the control scan and also the age and sets of the control. And we, in a command line, we, all, we also need to supply the age and sets of the, the patient so that it could run smoothly and then regress based on this demographic. And example of this comment, this uh, demographic is shown by here. So in the doc documentation, there's a detail about the things. But here, just for a reference, you can just supply age and sex. And then make sure that here you have something that could DSS Studio could match up. So he, for example, the participant ID, this could be any name, but make sure that the first column will have the content, the matching part of the file name. So once DSS Studio loaded, for example, the subject 209, then you, you will check for the, this demographic and then you will see, wow, this, this test match part of the file name and then you will know that the demographic, demographic is 67 year old male. And then we use this information to, re, to create a regressed control image from a pool of control and then make all the comparison. So command line will be generating all this tracks and similarly we could visualize it all together just by opening any of the subjects the file and then we could load it the 20 percent difference of the questions to processional study so each of the track file is generated by comparing each subject with a pool of control And doing the same, use statistics, name capacity here to Excel in a cross-sectional study. So here, just repeat the, the same. We just pull up the volume of the control finding. And what you could do is calculate the average. So this will be the expected volume generated by a control cross-sectional comparison. Similarly, we could do the same for this one. And then the ratio between these two will be the FDR. So we could have a quick compute here as two. So you see that here, the result is much more reliable, the FDR was discovery rate is about 7%. So in this study, the cross-sectional comparison is much more reliable than longitudinal. This could happen if I say the patients already have a lot of uh, track destruction already in the baseline scan. So even though there's a follow-up, maybe just catching most the aging process and there's not much track to be damaged during the, the two scan session. So whether the longitudinal study or cross-sectional study, which one is giving you more reliable results depending on the disease and also the study design. You may wonder how to get a more reliable result. Of course, instead of using 20% of difference, we could just say, okay, I can increase the percentage difference threshold. So if I repeat the same, but instead of using 20% difference, I use 30%. Then you can see that the overall result is much reduced. Especially in the control cases. So here you can see that in the control cases, the track count is much less. 
Also, another way to visualize it or to check all of them, each of them results. The trick here is like there is like a export a view function. You could copy to clipboard for each track. So once you click on this function, DSS Studio will visualize this view for each track specifically. Then we could assign maybe eight tracks per column. Click on it and then it may take a while. And we we'll say image capture to clipboard and you could pass it to any software. So I just passed it in pen. So you see here, there are 16 controls. The, the, the finding in the uh, differential chartography is not much of the finding for each of them. So this is column one, column two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And at the bottom here, those are the, the patients. So you see that the patients in a cross-sectional comparison, a lot of surveillance parts showing up, whereas the control is not many. So that's why this cross-sectional comparison is much more reliable. And then when we increase the threshold from 0.2 to 0.3, it eliminate most of the difference between due to in the control cases and still re, uh, the patient findings still remain. And then this FDR will be much better. So this will be the idea of the testing or to, to do with differential tractography results. And then you may wonder, well, how do we do it? Not just one by one, but like systematically as a group. So we, we have this question next week. And then the answer will be today's topic about differential tractography. So differential tractography also inherit the same idea of differential tractography, but instead of just tracking the difference of an isotopy in one subject, here the tracking is on the T statistic we got from correlation analysis. So instead of compare one scan to another scan, we run a correlation uh, of a group of subjects with age, with group ID, and then we will get a statistic, the T statistic from the, the correlation analysis. So for example, here, the same idea, we get a group of subjects data, MRI data, then we run for each voxel correlation here. The example is a correlated with age. And then the negative correlation we, we could enhance here for each of the voxel. So this will be used as the threshold for the T statistic to drive fiber tracking and then, to, and then to get the results. And similarly to test the robustness of this or reliability of this finding, we could have a kind of shame or control condition. And here, the, the statistic we use here is, is specifically uh, not actually using the control, but we, we correlate with a permuted age. So the idea is like here in the top row, with doing the typical correlational chartography. But in the bottom row, instead of correlating with each subject's age, the age here is randomly permuted. So the null hypothesis is like whether the finding on the top is the same as a random permuted age. And that's the idea of testing the correlational chartography result, which we call the kinetometries. So the kinetometry here is a statistical method using state permutation tests to test the significance of correlational chartography. So for each of the step detail here, but much easier if we could have a hands-on and then explain each of the step in more detail of how this works. So we start DSS Studio. And then the data set we will first use is a cross-sessional analysis. Here you need to download the database. And this database already include the demographics. So the demographic here is just a test file. You can, you can check it, but it's already included in the cross-sessional database. So once you download the cross-sessional database, go to step C3, correlational chartography. Go to week seven, cross-sessional study. So once you open it up, you will see the demographics loading in. 
If not, you could just open it here and open the demographic fit file a demographic test file. It could be a comma separated or space or test separated test file. And the first thing I always did is I make sure that the ID matches up. Sometimes this could be have a wrong order. And you can see that here, there's is a group ID showing the whether being control of being a patient. And the age says is also listed here. And the addition one is the, the one the days between scan, this will be used in the longitudinal study. So for correlational study, the first step is to run a correlation between each subject's data with any of the metrics we specify. So here we could set that the covariates we want to consider, say for example, we want to consider age or consider age or assess. Then we could set that which variable to study. And then here we said that the group, meaning that we want to see if there is a significant difference between different group ID. So the permutation test running is like, first of all, you would draw the non-permuted case, the typical correlational cartography. Then to test whether this finding is just by random or it's being real, what DSS Studio is doing in kinetometry is that you would randomly permute the group ID. So essentially, if the subject should be the control, could be randomly assigned being a patient or a control. So if you randomly assigned it and running through the same pipeline, and if you still get a lot of results, that means that your results may not be reliable because it's just the same as by random. If not, that means that, well, this group ID is real, if you permute it and then going through the same processing but not getting much of the result, that means your result is much more reliable. So it's a very similar paradigm as differential cartography, doing the same as typical one and have some kind of a null hypothesis or control or a shame setting. And in correlational cartography, this kind of control cases or null hypothesis, null hypothesis case is by permuting the, the demographics. So here is like, if we use age, for example, or use group as an example, this is studio or randomly permuted and drawn through the same pipeline. So ideally, if the finding is very reliable, this finding will be gone after permutation. So we could see how things, this work out. In here, we said that the things to be considered, so the age effect and the sex effects will be partially regressed out, and then the correlation will be specifically for the group. And for the bottom parameter, we'll be explained more detail, but in the advanced options, I will just reduce the permutation count just to speed up the computation. So ideally, you still need enough computation, permutation counts to get consistent convergent result. So once you hit this button, DSS Studio will run correlational cartography on both permuted and non-permuted results. And on the right, you can see it's testing whether there are increased FA in group one or either, and also testing where there are decreased FA in group one. So these two tests are separated. One is that detecting where there's an increase, Another is detecting where there is a decrease. And then you see here, there will, should be two curves. One is permuted, one is non-permuted. So this one is showing that the permuted. And then for the increase FA, it's like there's almost no nothing found in the increase FA in the patient's group. And the decrease FA, the non-permuted one is actually not, not visible here. That means that the reliability is pretty high. So once you permute it, then everything's gone. And only the results remain if you didn't repute, uh, permute the demographics. And at the bottom, you can see the report generating. So we could quickly read through it. Here is first reporting tracks with increased FA in group one. Group one is the patient ID group. So you see here is almost nothing in increased when we compare patient with the control. 
And the second section is whether there are decreases of FA in patient group in comparison with control. And you will see that it enhance all the cerebellum and brain stand and match and understanding of this disease. And you will calculate the FDR. So this FDR is the ratio between the non-permitted results and permitted results. Given the uh, then threshold, and then you would you would accumulate the counts, and then doing the, the similar things we did in differential tractography, but here is a fully automatic done by this studio. So there are two ways here. One is like well, <clears throat> we have specified the length threshold, and then you would report the FDR. But another occasion occasion is that you you would like to see all statistics statistically significant results regardless of which threshold you see yes. and that means that we would have something called FDR control that means that will show tracks that have FDR value lower than 0 0.05 so instead of reporting FDR we could say I want to show see all the results just under 0 0.05 FDR now you check this box and then click specify the value and you could run it again. So essentially the analysis is very similar, it's just looking at <clears throat> whether you think reporting the FDR or use FDR control to show the results. And also there are parameters to that we can adjust, especially for the T-threshold. So T-threshold, the higher value, um, just a quick view of the result. So instead of reporting FDR, here showing all the results uh, lower than 0 0.05. Uh, in some cases, there will be much difference, but here is that you will see almost identical. And the T threshold here, you may wonder what it is. So T, the higher T value means there's a much, it's thresholded as a much stronger difference. So this will only show the strong effect size. If you reduce it and then round it, usually you will cover more track. So if there is only a smaller difference, the order T threshold will allow you to see the changes here. Yeah, in, in Mac version, this screen capturing function is not doing um, correctly, but you could do the same by clicking the view result in 3D and manually generating it. So I see the question in the chat. So as you see, once we reduce the threshold, there are more tracks generated here. You see here that some of the longer tracks showing up is some maybe extended more here. I see in the question, do we need to select group as a covariate? Um, it doesn't need to. I could give it, a, oh yeah, you have to because it's also included in the correlation model. So you have, you need to select the covariate. But this, the effect of group will not be partial regress out, just for your information. So even if you set that the group here, and once you say you want to study the group variable, only the start, the age and sex will be regress out. And then the effect of the group will be studied. I see a question about the T threshold and the length threshold. So first of all, the length threshold is helping to get eliminate fragments. So as we can see here, um, even even we run the permutic case, there could be some findings. Just like differential tractography, there will be all difference everywhere. But the length threshold allow you to eliminate the fragment and get you a higher reliability. Usually with a longer lens, this will be a higher reliability. Because that requires the, the difference or the correlation to propagate along a longer pathway. 
Here, the input is DTI. I see the question here because this one is a, only six direction. It's more suitable for DTI FA. So you can see here is the reporting DTI FA. But if your data is good enough, then you could try uh, QA, then you would report QA value. Or either this kind of database could be built upon any different and a source to fee value. So one way to explain the uh, the length threshold is that if you look at this raw data, here the length threshold we set up to be low value. Usually the FDR will be much lower. We can see we can see find get different results by increasing or changing. So usually we see here. At different lengths, there will be FDR values because I, if you have a longer length threshold, you will eliminate more fragments. So the FDR will be better it's in most of the cases, but not all apply to all of them. And you, you will see here, once it finish, the FDR will be recalculated. A lot of false trapping eliminated. The reason is that there's an advanced option for pruning. So pruning is that it tend to remove um, fragmented results. So if you turn this off, or that reduce it and run it again, the most of the fragment will still remain. So this pruning interaction, the pruning is the same function we mentioned in the week two or week three if I were tracking. So it's an automatic way to remove the singular or fragments in the data set. It also works similarly as a lens threshold. And in this case, it also help you will remove both fragments in all the all, all the either being permuted or non-permuted case and it really improve the FDR. So you see here if we reduce it permuted iteration, some of the things remains here. And after running this, all these things, you will notice that in the in the folder, there will be generate a re, report generated as a file. So we go longitudinal, and there are all files generated for fun with the things we just run. For example, this report page is a HTML file. All the figures are so safe, and also the distribution of the FDR. It's also available as a test file, so you can see all the all the things being saved in in the format that you can access later. And in the Mac version, this, some of the figure may not be correctly generated. So what you could do is you could click on View Results in 3D, and DSS Studio will load results for you, and then you could manually generate it as a view you like it. So for example, it said here, it says open <clears throat> the results and then show you the increase and decrease. And then you could capture the view, uh, even though in some versions, either Linux or Mac, the screen capturing doesn't work out. And also once you get the results, the immediate step we could do is that we could manually segment each results and then report what it is. For example, I can manually set that this, this would be the codal spinal track. So I, I may segment this one and report this as a codal spinal track. And also uh, this one could be the latinal spinal. So it goes through the, the reticular formation and also a lot of cerebral pathway. Also, cerebral peduncle. So, this would be the middle cerebral peduncle. So, this is related to the week two and week, uh, week three material. We could manually set the results and report it. Of course, if you have questions, say, oh, I don't know which track this one is, there's always like a handy function, but not always reliable, is you could manually um, automatically recognize tracks and DSI studio give you suggestion that well this one is Cox Carlson. But sometimes for tracks that really go close to each other and may not be totally reliable. So in the updated version, I specifically took out um automatic recognition of the results because I found that there some user may just report it um without really checking it. So percentage here in the recognized function is the percentage of the tracks being recognized as each pathway. 
So if it goes here, you, you will say, well, like more than half is a body, other symptom. Still, is may not be correctly report some other things, but that's why there's a limitation in the, this function. Maybe this one is a phonics so being identified. So one in the immediate step after getting this result is that we can identify each of them or either quantify the volume. And also in the week five, we have demonstrated ROI based analysis using kinetometry. So what you can also do is that uh, you could load the results. Say for example, we want to get each of the tracks statistic. Then what you could do is uh, you could, instead of opening this step C3, you open the kinetometry database in step T3. And we do record the week five assignment part. We also did the same. We open a kind of telemetry database and then we could draw a region or load the track. And then we would report the statistics. Then there will be the value for each subject reported here. So we go back tracking the week five. Then you will find this one. And this could be using correlational chartography. So for example, I can here, after opening the correlational chartography database in step T3, I can load the tracks, all the findings we got from the correlational analysis. So for example, the one we open here, and then we could just copy uh, under click, right click, and then set the statistics. So what this step is doing is that CSS Studio would use this track location to sample the metrics from, from each of the subjects. So you could view this as like a post hoc analysis after our main correlational analysis. And we'll copy to clipboard and then paste it. If I DSS Studio would compute the value of the DTIFA just within this track location. And then by looking at this value, you could you could see that the, the scatter power show a much, much lower value in the patient group than the control group. So this will be like a like post analysis validation to really show that well how the FA value dropping compared to the control almost like 50% drop. So there are two typical ways after we get this result. One is label which track we have finding. Another is that we could output the FA value from the current topic database just within those tracks. Can we Carter based on the de degree of FA decrease? Um, I haven't think of this before, but it would be good to try. Um, as long as we could load it as a nifty file. So if we can load it as a nifty file, then we could use it to color. For, for example, if we say this ISO image is inserted for, is calculated based on the decrease of FA, then in the track rendering color part, we could have a local index of anything we loaded. So the ISO here, and you could visualize differently. So you could insert any Nifty file as a 3D map, and then you would render on these tracks like this one. Um, so I, there is no really available to calculate what's the amount of FA decrease, but you can compute it separately a Nifty file, load it in, and then turn on local rendering like this one. Second question, server effort a bit lower. Range is it normal? Let's take a look of it. So that those are patients. So those those lower than 0.2 are cerebral uh, spinal cerebral test cell patients. For the control, they are 0.2 to 0.3. And just to let you know the FA value, it depends on the B value used and number of sampling directions. So it's also heavily depend on the sampling scheme. 
So usually I won't use the absolute value of FA just to say whether it's normal or abnormal. Um, it also depends on how you acquire the data and also data quality. So if you have a low data quality, if you have a very low B value, so in this case, if I recall it right, the B value is only 1,000. Typically, we use uh, 1,500 so to, or even higher than the FA value will be higher. So FA value depending on the B value. Usually, would, a comparison between healthy and control will be better. Is there a way to get a track profile for each track in the database to see if the difference results from reliable? So anything if you involve each subject, then most suitable analysis will be differential tractography. Um, because once you remove in the correlational tractography, everything will be in the same space and all the track will be aligned all together. You, much of the individual difference may not be readily available except for the metrics we could save it separately for each of the subjects. One question, could we export the 3D rendering figure? Um, I would say here the functions under save 3D screen in high resolution, um, but in Mac version or Linux version, this sometimes doesn't work. <clears throat> if you use Windows version that you could specify, say, 3,000 over 4,000, 4, any value, as long as your graphic cards take it, then you will save it to a, a file. And then hopefully it works out. So the one, this one is like high, the one we just generated. So you can specify the, the width and the height using this function. So just repeat the, the step Kanatomastry is doing is like using a permutation test to validate this result using permutation. And the comparison is compared between permuted case and non-permuted case. And here in the permuted uh, demographic could be the one you assign like the group or the age. And the statistics or reliability is quantified by false discovery rate. You're just showing the example, like without permutation, then it's false positive plus true positive. After the permutation, then of course, it's just all by random. It should be all false positive. Their, their ratio will be the FDR. And there are two results could report, could fix the lens and then report the FDR, or we would specify if the threshold and then report the results. So we finish one part of it. And then second is, and also a second part is that we also have partial correlation considering age and sex. So to consider age and sex here, what we just did is that we just check age and sex in the set of covariates then those effects will be regressed out. So one, stratified analysis using cohort selection. So say for example, we want to study male group and female group. We're easily doing it here. Um, the way to do it is that there's a cohort page, click on it. Then we will say, I want to set, select says equals one and click on add to criteria and you will see only the male subjects are highlighted here the total number is 15 and you hear once you have highlighted those and the wrong kinetometry the analysis will only be done in the male group so you can see here a total of 15 subjects were included in the analysis. So in the report, you could also validate it again. It's not all the subjects, but the subjects, those who are male. So here you say subject with gender equals one was selected. So this is a quick way you could run um, a stratified analysis based on age, based on sex, based on any demographics. 
and uh, still the same. Here's the increase FA. You see here the curve showing up is the permuted. So this is by random. So you will see this, those are random results and this is non-permuted. So this is essentially no finding of increased FA in a patient. Whereas in the decreased FA or the patient group, this solid line is the non-permuted, meaning that this one is the correlational chartography without permuting the group. And once you permute the group here, you see the tiny dot here, almost all the results are gone. That means that our result is not by random. And the null hypothesis that of whether this results by random will be rejected, essentially. Yes, it's a male patient versus male control in the comparison. So you could do the same for the male and the female. Um, by switching to, you could either input the test here, I like say, I do want to set that gender equals zero and apply it. Now we switch to female. And you can even add more criteria, say I want to have an um, older male, then you can just add comma and then another requirement adding in. So this run the full analysis down to so see the increase is, FDR is one mean that this result is not reliable, which is the, the increase, there's no increase FA in the patient group. But when the decrease of FA, the FDR is more reliable on this fine thing. So these are, these results just from the male subjects. And you could repeat the same, just mentioning the female here, I just reduce the permutation count lower, so it runs quicker. So this result will be the female. You will see again in the increase FA, the permuted case and non-permuted case are the same distribution at different lengths and counts. So this is a hist kind of a histogram or track lens. A lot of things, a lot of findings, just small fragments here. Whereas in the decrease FA group, it's more like this one. So you can see the increase FA is that FDR is 0.17 and not much of the finding, but the decrease FA in the female group essentially replicate the things in the female study. So in the cohort function, you could add multiple like age greater than 30 year old and add to the criteria. Then now the, the N number is just eight. So you could combine multiple or just have one, only one of it. You will say, I want to analyze the, the more aged group. And then you could do the same. So it's more aged group. So you could quickly stratify the analysis. I see a question, could we get a list of what specific are different other than manually selecting? In the older version, this, this studio would report it um based on track recognition but here is your question quite a way to get a list of which specific tricks are different then there's no such function of doing so um i can think of a, a, a way to do it like you could It, or either you could just like reporting all of them all together. So in the older version, once you get this result, and if you don't want to manually segment them, say for example, these are all the results we got, and you can just go straight to the recognize. But there's a lot of track may take a while. So you would report part of it being corpus callosum, part of it being corospinal trap, part of it being um, cerebellum. In the older version, you report this, but I found that like sometimes the recognition result may not be 100% reliable and to avoid um, reporting um, false results or reporting the error results, I remove it. So the, and specifically, require you to manually segment it. That would be the best because it will make sure that results is anatomically make sense. 
So here, for example, you report 30% surveillance left, 20%. So in the older version, you just give this. And I found that several, uh, there are paper published just by copy all this and then pass it all. But some may not be accurate. Um, and it depends on where the location of the tracks. So the best is that you could set many segments, it, recognize it, and identify the finding instead of um, just reporting all the things. So they quickly go through, I quickly go through the cohort result and we will remove all of them and click apply again, then all of the subject will be selected. Next one, we could combine ROI or ROA analysis. In the second tab here, I would say I, will, I could just, instead of studying the whole brain, I could specify a region. So if you switch to user define, click from the atlas, I could say I only want to study the brain stand difference. So I guess say brain stand from free server atlas and then use it as an ROI. So this will be specifically just study this region and can click wrong again. So you would only set that tracks. So all the, this correlational cryptography is also fiber tracking. So fiber tracking could be compiled with ROA, ROI, or terminative region. This will give you more specific results. For example, if you find your FDR is not good, just because there is just too much finding in the unrelated area. And you could, you could limit your analysis just within maybe one hemisphere or just within cerebellum or within a region. After bringing this assumption, sometimes it'll give it more specific or reliable results. So it only said that the track goes to um, the brain stem. A lot of like cerebellum tracks may not be enhanced here and require the track that goes through the brain stem will be enhanced here. And similarly, you could say, I don't want to study the brain stem, change it to ROA and then run it again. So this com is combined with week three or week four course of region based fiber tracking. This could be combined with all different kind of setting of the regions just to get your results you wanted. So there are different ways to stratify based on cohort, based on study region, um, and allowing you to really looking at this data at all different aspects. So you see excluding the brain stand. So anything that going right through the brain stem is eliminated. And we say only the cerebellum remains. I also demonstrate but after the analysis, we could identify pathway using manual virtual taxation and recognition. Um, this, will, this one we mentioned in week two. And then also show how to plot the things and then you could go to the week five homework. So let last five minutes, I quickly go through the longitudinal database. As you recall in differential cryptography, the longitudinal database is not as significant or having a much smaller effect size. It's likely due to those subjects are more elder. Um, and then maybe the disease stage is more later stage, so a lot of traffic damage. So this Panatone database is a little bit different. So you can see here, instead of just the baseline scan is calculated from the difference between the second scan and the first scan. So to show how they differ here, if you go to step T2, and if you look at the longitudinal database, you will see that only the difference are calculated. So for each of the subject, this one is longitudinal. And this one is cross-sectional. So cross-sectional is, is not calculating the difference. And to calculate the difference here, the documentation has a detail. Essentially, you need to create a database, including baseline and follow-up scan. Let's see if I can find it here. And then demo quickly demonstrate how we can create this longitudinal database.
sorry, I don't have the data here, but if you want to call, create this longitudinal database, you could just refer to the documentation. You only need to store all the scan, including the first scan and second scan, and then you and then use the tool on the top. There is a tool longitudinal scan that you will try to match consecutive scan to get the results. So let's run, let's run the longitudinal analysis and then see how we can answer each of the question here in just a few minutes. First of all, I just reduce the commutation count to 400. And the difference in the longitudinal database is that like we could study specific, specifically only the, the change and not just like doing the correlation with age or sex or group ID. So first question, are there significant decrease of FA in the patient group? So this FA decrease could be due to age, it could be due to the disease. So what we are going to answer, how we are going to do to answer first one is, first of all, set that the cohort group equals one because we want to know whether there's a decrease of FA in the patient group. Click on this one, you see all the patients are selected. And then I can say, I can change the results instead of doing the group, I study the longitudinal change and run the analysis. So this step is essentially answering the first question, are there a significant decrease of FA in the patient group? And of, of course, in the cohort, we said that the pa only the patient group, and then see if there is a significant decrease by selecting the star P variable as longitudinal change. And in this curve, we will see that the decrease of FA has non permutic curve on the top, so it will be more reliable, whereas the increase FA is essentially no, nothing, and then once you permute it, the, the curve is on the top. So there's no decrease and it's decrease, and you can see the finding here, and then, yes, it is, not only to the ser spinal cerebral region, but also other regions decrease. But I mentioned that this decrease could be due, is between the longitudinal scan, could include the disease progress, could be due to also be due to aging process. So for the second question, are there significant decrease over in the control group? To answer this one, you just switch this to group equals zero and you will select the control group and we could do it the same. Still testing the longitudinal change. And just find the FDR, you can see there are significant findings here. So as I mentioned, this for the control group, it would be mostly due to aging process. And there could be also a lot of findings here. So there are also findings in the corpse callosum and some of the in the brainstem. And the third question, are the decrease of FA in the control group correlated with age? To answer this one, instead of correlating, just finding the logical change, I could set that the age and then see if the finding is correlated with age. Also, if you want to regress our sets, then you could click on this one. If not, it's just leave it unchecked and doing the same. So to answer the third question, just click age and then to look at whether the age is correlated with the change of FA. So the left part is whether the increase of FA correlated with age and the right is where the decrease of FA correlated with age. And then this will report those results. So a lot of them not showing that, even though this tiny bit difference could be due to just very low permutation count. Similarly, where the finding in the patient group correlated with age, just switch to patient group and then run the analysis again.
So I see the check. Let's go through the check um, questions. Means over time, if a reduction were observed in those regions, I was like, yes. So to um, approve a new part of your question about whether it, yes, once you we bring in the study region, then the tracks are required to pass those regions if we set it there, so why? If you want to find a tutorial of this, uh, the video tutorial, we will go to the practicum page. The link will be here. So you click on the link and this will be previous week's tutorial and this week will be posted, will be added to here. Well, we are almost finishing and a little bit over time. So essentially you want to test it, whether the change is in the brainstem, you just add in the study regions of brainstem and doing the same. So to answer each of the hypothesis questions, and you could just doing the corresponding act of it, um, whether you study the longitudinal change, or whether you see where the change are correlated with age, or even you could say whether the change is correlated with sex or anything. Well, this conclude all our practicum. Um, I will stay longer answering questions you have. Um, you can feel free to log up and thank you for your participation. Any questions here or anything thank you? Well, thank you for your participation and feel free to send follow-up questions or suggestions to my email or post it on the DSS Studio website. Um, and also just let you know, if you go to the DSS Studio website, there are data provided. I'm constantly adding more data here, either being kind of talking to database or fit file. This pool will be increased over time. So you can go back at here and then check whether you find any of the data feel interesting. There could be study generated um, based on those openly available data. Um, Either many of the study haven't run the correlational chartography. If you're interested, you can just download any of them. For example, the aging study, there haven't been correlational chartography study uh, conducted. And this one you could generate here are over even controversy database for correlational chartography. So if you're interested, you just download it and then repeat the same based on our tutorial. And then you could write a paper about it. Even in the developmental, I also provide all the things. So those are low hanging fruit for you to get a quick publication if you want. Also in the other data set, you can also look at it. I see the question here for longitudinal study time one minus time two data was spent. Oh, uh, yes. The last session about differential chartography is, yeah, you can, you can either time one minus time two, then this the mapping the decrease. And you could mapping the increase by flipping the order, or the order uh, make it like time two minus time one. But for correlational chartography, I always use time two minus time one because the decrease value will be represented by a negative sign in this difference. So in the correlational chartography, I always calculate it by time two minus time one. That's a little bit different from differential chartography. Another question, should we limit the risk when analyze if there is some problem in some part of the acquisition? Um, yes. So if you notice that like, there is a function in DSS Studio to allow you to exclude cerebellum because for a lot of acquisition, and, uh, maybe you don't have enough slice coverage at the cerebellum. Also, there are more distortion in the anterior points. So one way you could get more specific results excluding those regions is just not entirely not relevant. Usually that gives you more specific results. Okay, so I see a question about how to load those demographics. So those demographics here, you could load it by clicking this, click this button. And the format, example format, 
is in at this link. So if we look at this demographic format, download it, open it. So it sends you a, a test file. Usually I will still include participant ID so that here I can check this participant ID whether it match with the subject's ID in the database. You will see the group age says this here. You could have tab separated or comma separated. So here is a tab separated value or either sep space separated. Just not miss all of them. You should choose either it's tab separated or space separated or comma separated. So you could have regressor just loading in and DSS Studio will load in and then match that. I see your question said, um, if we, if you use DSI for your future work, happy to be a course or help us or provide insight. Well, I would be happy to help. Um, um, that, that's, that's my comment. And when I help, I always help revising the manuscript and see if the message is robust enough. So usually I won't sit down a free write on the course or I, I will contribute something if I to be listed, just let you know, but happy to collaborate. And a lot of time, if my contribution is not significant enough, I, I won't ask for a course or shit. I'll be happy to answer the question. So if you have a question or quick help you need it, you can just post it on DSS Studio forum. There's no need to include me as the paper unless I could be helpful for your study. So just that you know, here's a discussion forum. Um, I answer those questions on a daily basis. Sometimes I may miss one or the two threads. Feel free to send me a reminder. Um, but most of them will keep monitoring this and then answering all the questions here. Next one. Can we please go over the question regarding are there significant more trends in pacing good? Okay, yes. So the idea here is I don't a case control idea. So idea is very similar, either it's for differential cartography or correlational cartography. So it's like two roles here, either in correlational cartography, it's like this one, differential cartography, also the, this one. So idea is like the, the, on, on the top of it, it's like our legal analysis, whether it being differential cartography or correlational cartography. But always we will get the results. There could be a weak co correlation regardless of any kind of data set we have. Or if we compare any two scans, there will always be a difference. So if we go pipe, go through the pipeline, whether it being differential cartography, then you always have a finding. Correlational cartography, there could be still some finding. And to test whether this is, is just by random, then we have to design like a sham study or like control study. So in the differential cartography, a way to design this experiment is that we could come on the top, we compare patient with control and the bottom we could compare control with control. So if we get almost no result comparing between controls and in comparison, we get a lot of result comparing patient and control, then on the top is more reliable. So that means this result is not by random. Otherwise, you will say in, if here we also get another result comparing control with control, that means, well, maybe those are just physiological difference or just for systematic noise. So the idea here is to get a big ratio depending on your experiment design. It could be a longitudinal study. So longitudinal study, that means that on the top, it could be patients based on scan and patients follow scan. At the bottom, it could be control subjects based on scan and control subjects follow scan. If this is not much finding and I'm told a lot of finding, that means that this, this finding is more meaningful because that we essentially um, identify or map the actual neural change due to the disease process. Similarly for correlational cartography, Kind of control experiment is that randomly permute the age or group. 
So in in this this one, if the group ID remain the same, then we get a lot of difference comparing or correlating between patient and control group. And once we permute the case and all this, all the findings gone, that means that our, our result is more reliable. Hopefully I read answer the question for Linda. Another question on wrong DSS studio in singularity. Surprise is so taking a long time. Um, it depends on which comment you use. Um, if you can post the comment you use in this DSS Studio forum, I, I can do check the code and see if there's a way to improve it. Or maybe there's some process like spending a lot of time just to save a data, then I can point you that there could be a workaround. I see a direct message about putting a project together. So some of the participants here, you may be taking the CMU's practicum course, then I will have a follow-up email for you. For those students taking this, this workshop as a course, then there will be a follow-up project. So your question is, your construction steps the T2B, should you option DTI, QST, uh, you are right. Yeah, DTI and GQI are for native space and QSDR is for MNI space, yeah. Any questions here or anything unclear? Yeah, you can share screen. Let me end my share so you could turn on if you would like to share your screen. By the way, I don't have recording on the first week of the course. If you're asking for September 9th, I'm sorry. That the first course, I didn't record it. And I got a suggestion to record it and share it. So I started recording it for the second week. But in the future, I would have more workshops, maybe next year. Um, you will go back to this page, you will see it. Yeah, you can share if you want. Smith, you want to share your screen, you can go ahead and share it. I can hear your voice if you can turn on your mic and then say, specifically say what your question is. I see the mask is okay. There is another mask I will load. That there is a lot of things in the desktop. That's right. No uh, problem. So some, yeah, here some of the uh, red uh, mask were cut off when I do one of the subject. Yeah. Yeah, the mask looks okay. And this one looks okay. There is another one I will try. If you come across a mask that having a problem, you can go to the edit button on the top right corner. Yes, yes. And then assign threshold. No, not hit, not this one. The edit button, not the correction. This is step T2A on the right, go to the right. There's an edit button that you can change the mask. In the in the same window itself. Yep, in the, in the same window. Mm -hmm. Or either yeah. I can show you how to do it if you want. Yes, yes. Let me see if I can find one data. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Yes. Do you see my screen? Yes, I can see. So there's an edit button. Here. Oh, edit button there. Okay. So say if your mask is not big enough, you just yeah. dilate it. Or either you just get all of them. For GQI and QSDR, it doesn't matter. So for example, if there's wrong reconstruction, as long okay. as it covers all the 
brain regions um, for GQ and QSDR is pretty robust against. So you see here, even though I use a huge mask, the QA value yes. is still almost zero in the back. Okay. Usually that's for DTI. You see the DTI is not reliable if the signal is dropping low. So DTI yes. phase like this one. But if you use GQI, like a QA, yeah. there's essentially no need for a mask. Uh, it's okay. just set it to zero. Okay, it to zero. Okay. Even without the mask, the, the fiber tracking is okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, I can use that subject. Yeah, sure. You can, okay. or you can just assign, assign the max to zero, stretch yeah. holding and make it like a zero value dilated. Command line, you can also do the similar like stretch holding equals zero. Um, okay. So you can do the same. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Yes, a re recording will be available. Um, there are, Day limitations like uh, three or four weeks. I, I will try to see if I can keep it longer. Um, because Zoom would delete it sometime after, and then maybe I will find another storage space and then try to keep up the link. Well, thank you for your participation. Any questions here? If no, then hope you enjoyed this workshop. And then lucky in sometime next year, there will be another workshop. Um, I will also I'll post it in the practicum page. So if you have students or other colleagues that you would like to learn this, then you can introduce them to this page and then sign up for the workshop. Any question? I see your question, you did yes at the studio all by myself. I won't say it's all by myself because like, there's a lot of works inspired by different people. But the coding part, yes, is mostly by myself. Um, but in terms of the feature, all the functions, all the things, a lot of them is I like, suggested by users or either learn from other studies. So it's really say I can do it everything by myself. And thank you for your participation. If there's no questions, I'll end it here. If you have follow-up question, feel free to send me an email and go to or either post it on the DSS Studio forum. And thank you for your participation. Uh, one more question. Hello. Oh, sure. Yeah, yes. uh, the link will be there uh, after the course. The link, the video links. Oh uh, yes. Okay. So so this today's course will be um um add it to the link and then yeah. if you go to each of them there should be previous weeks i will try to keep those available as long as i can okay thank you so much okay great well thank you for your participation hope you see you soon